Welcome back to the first proper Cavs game reaction in quite some time now. We are back in the Cavs jacket from today's previous video, or I guess technically yesterday's video, uh, depending on the, what time zone you're in, with Cleveland winning a game that was a lot tighter than a lot of us would have liked, but a win is a win, 114-106 to 106 over the Wizards. Not just a final score that was aided by some sort of late comeback by Washington or anything. This one was just a nail-biter throughout the entire game. Uh, Washington's... Their, their game was mostly fueled by the efforts of the trio of Kyle Kuzma, Corey Kispert, and Dan Gafford, although Tyus Jones did have a pretty solid game as well for the Wizards. Although a Washington player did, who did not have a solid game was Jordan Poole, who has absolutely fallen off a cliff this season. Uh, he was getting booed by Wizards fans by the by the end of this one. Went 0 for 5, no points in the game, and he did end up fouling out as well. So uh, just not things things aren't going very well for Jordan Poole with the Wizards. Uh, for Cleveland, it was another dynamic 40-point performance from Donovan Mitchell, who now has 18 40-plus point games in his Cavaliers stint so in less than two seasons as well which is insane he only trails LeBron James for the franchise record he's already surpassed Kyrie Irving and doing so in only 108 total games in his Cavalier career so far that is crazy to think about throw in eight rebounds five assists and a steal uh, those are the kinds of performances that can bail a team out on a rough night against a bad NBA team where the Cavs they, they had a lot of I guess you call it up and downs but I feel like if you take Donovan Mitchell and his insane game out of, out of the equation here, the Cavs certainly did enough to lose this one. I guess I should say Washington and the guys who were going for them certainly also did enough to compete and make this a, a real contest. The, the Washington Wizards definitely could have nabbed their 10th win of the season tonight, but Donovan Mitchell's huge game was a big part of why that didn't end up happening. And it, it's, it's insane that Donovan Mitchell, if he continues to score at the pace that he is and he sticks around with the Cavaliers for quite some time he is on pace to eventually kept catch up with LeBron James in that franchise record for 40 plus point games so I guess that that could be another incentive for Donovan Mitchell to stick around long term for the Cavs but that uh, that's for the offseason but another promising game for Cleveland came from Evan Mobley who doesn't really seem to be dealing with any lingering effects from his injury he had 22 points against Washington shot 9 for 10 from the floor also made both of his three-point attempts which I guess if that becomes a thing that Evan Mobley has in his arsenal that would be huge in terms of spacing out opposing defenses even more if he develops that three-point shot. He also had eight rebounds, one assist, one steal, and one block. And the block that he had was something else. I saw a lot of people on social media say it looked like it looked like something out of a 2K animation. And I don't disagree. It was an insane block. But uh, a lot of the rest of the team in this one was just kind of meh. I thought Jarrett Allen had an all right game, even though Gafford certainly overwhelmed him a bit in the matchup. I feel like Gafford definitely got the better of Jarrett Allen throughout the entirety of the contest. Uh, but we had a really bad night from Darius Garland. It doesn't give me any pleasure to say this, especially since uh, in my last video, I just kind of went on about how I think if the Cavs are playing at their best, if they were to reach their ceiling, Darius Garland being a big role in the offense is going to be a part of that, which uh, with night like, with nights like this, that's certainly not going to be something that, that holds up very well. And I'm seeing a lot of people in the Cavs fan base, you know, just ready to toss him out of the roster at, at this point, ready to trade him. I'm, I'm not there. That, that is not where I stand on Darius Garland at this point. However, the game he had tonight isn't really not going to, to do a whole lot to endear him to fans who are skepti skeptical of the long-term benefits of Darius Garland and the organization, which again, I want to say, I am not in that camp. I, I like Darius Garland. I feel like what he can bring to this team definitely improves the, the roster and, and the long-term outlook and the ceiling of this team and all of that. But this was not a game that exemplified that at all. He was uh, he definitely did not help help the cause. Uh, Max Struess didn't do much to help either. Only made one shot, went 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. He did get a couple of offensive rebounds and he did get a block. But, you know, Max Struess was brought in to space the floor and, and hit shots. And he just didn't really hit shots in this one uh, against Washington tonight. Uh, the only player to get significant minutes off the bench was Isaac Okoro, which is a little bit strange because usually Karis LeVert is relied upon for around 20 to maybe even in the upper 20 to 30 minutes a night, but he didn't play in the entire second half, and that perked up a lot of people's eyes and ears for this one, mine included. Uh, you have Chris Fedor, who covers the, the Cavaliers for Cleveland.com. He said he had a bit of a side note for that on his write-up, which kind of my, my, I, I get to, into my reservations on that comment later in the video, but it seems like it has the smell of a trade, especially with the NBA trade deadline 
being tomorrow and this would be the last chance for the Cavs to make a move obviously and I, I gotta say I really don't like the idea of a Karis LeVert trade right now I don't I don't think I'm alone in that sentiment as well I feel like this year he's been a great sixth man for the Cavs maybe if this was happening uh, last season I remember at the last season's deadline a lot of people were really wondering that they would be if they would be moving um, Lavert and Kevin Love at the deadline neither technically happened although Love was eventually bought out but uh, this year I feel like Karis Lavert has found a, a really solid role for himself on the Cavs and, and the team has definitely benefited from his services this season he brings a scoring threat to the depth that really helps keep opposing defenses on their toes and keeps them honest I mean I guess it, it's technically possible that, that that this isn't a trade and there's something else but I'm not really sure why else he would get plopped on the bench for the entirety of the second half Nobody really mentioned an injury on the broadcast or in post game that I saw. Uh, he didn't have a great game by any by any means in this one against Washington, but I don't think it was necessarily time to ride the pine bad, especially when there were there were multiple players that you would hope to to get a little bit more from struggling this one against Washington. Kind of a a down game for for some impact players, not not named Karis Levert as well. I'm just not if he is traded, I'm not really sure who he would be dealt for and, and how would you know, who would step into the role of Karis LeVert on this team and be any better? I feel like as far as the Cavs go, Karis LeVert has been exactly what you would want out of a sixth man on this Cavs team. I mean, and also Cleveland, have they haven't really been reported to be going too heavy after anyone at this point in the deadline. I haven't really heard a whole lot of rumors from, from you know, I haven't heard a whole lot of credible rumors or reporters going after saying, oh, the Cavs are, are targeting this specific player and they're, and they're willing to move X and Y to get him. I just haven't really seen that. They seemed pretty poised to stay put at the deadline. A bit of an odd situation. More will probably come out, you know, right after this is uploaded. And, and this makes my ruminations irrelevant, but oh well. What I do know is that tonight the Cavs won a pretty rocky game against the Washington Wizards to increase their winning streak to seven. Again, it's not necessarily how a lot of us Cavs fans probably drew up uh, uh, this game over a currently nine-win Washington Wizards team, but at the end of the day, a W is a W, and again, maybe Karis LeVert just isn't traded, and Chris Fedor is just kind of hyping up his article for clicks with some rumor and innuendo, which, I mean, he wouldn't be the first one to do it, and he certainly wouldn't be the last as well. And the Cavs will attempt to reach another eight-game winning streak tomorrow when they take on Brooklyn. Uh, they take on the Nets in Brooklyn, and that will be tomorrow evening. So we'll see if the Cavs can continue their winning ways. But that'll do it for me in this video. Thank you all very much for watching to the end. If you did indeed make it this far, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like it. You can let me know down in the comments below what you think about this game and how the Karis LeVert situation might play out. Uh, but once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you at the next one.